Welcome into the official 2020-21 Soccer OG English Premier League preview show. Everyone just relax. We have a long way to go and a short time to get there. In the words of the great, late Jerry Reed, I'm wearing my West Ham shirt. Well, my Iron Maiden shirt, West Ham replica. I don't have time to talk about West Ham because, quite frankly, they're not going to be very good. I'm going to put them at 15th, which right now I'm fine with, as long as I don't have to sit through another relegation battle. They're good enough. But this is a big year for the Premier League. This is a year coming up. And look, uh, you know, people criticize me when I criticize the Premier League for not getting a team into the semifinals of the Champions League or the final of the Europa League. Every other league got someone in there. And you go, oh, it's just one year. We got Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur in the final of the year prior. Yeah, but prior to that, it was pretty dire, except for Liverpool making a final the previous year. Before that, you have to go back to 2012. That's how I judge these leagues. We want to call them the best league in the world, and I think the Premier League is going to be the best league in the world this year. But they got to act like it when they're in the big European competitions. I think they'll get there. Real quickly, my relegation teams, Burnley, Fulham, and Crystal Palace. Not in that order. I think Crystal Palace 18th, Burnley 19th. People give me grief for Burnley. How dare they? That's not, those teams survive. Well, it's going to get mixed up a little bit here in 2020, 21. I'm going to deal with the top. So I'm going to go with the teams that will finish first through five. I want to include Arsenal because I have them in fifth place, but I really love what they are doing. Mikel Arteta shown that he was, you know, he was a big star. He was a guy in demand. He came to the Premier League and then he learned from Pep Guardiola and he went through the process. He was, wasn't just given the team. He earned that and he's proven to be a guy who knows what he's doing. So they got lucky there. He got him a couple trophies. I look for them to really put the pressure on third and second, third, and fourth, which I don't think is going to be a big gap. Maybe first we'll have a little bit more of a gap in this season. So where did I have them? Okay. <laughs> Top four in England. Number four is Chelsea. I would love to put them higher, and they were extremely active, really historically active in the transfer market. Thiago Silva, who was free. Hakim Zayek, 40 million. Ben Chilwell, 50 million. Kai Havertz, 75 million. I think those are dollars roughly. Uh, Timo Werner. This is incredible what they were able to do. And then Christian Pulisic, of course, who's going to get the number 10 shirt. This is going to be his team. You know, they don't just give 10, number 10 jerseys away. You've got to earn them. You've got to earn them. You don't see guys with number 10 on their back on the bench, ever. It is the heaviest jersey in all of sports. If you wear the number 10 in soccer, you are automatically the coolest guy on the team. You are automatically the guy everyone points to. If you want to take shortcuts in my industry and I ask you, hey, we're doing a game between, you look who's, you, we're doing a game between Long John Silver impersonators and the London gynecologists. That's a little bit off of Monty Python. First thing you do if you don't know anything about the teams is to see who's got the 10 on their back and you go, there's their key player. So I go off on a little tangent. But number 10 jerseys are huge and it belongs now to Christian Pulisic. The big problem with Chelsea is. Frank Lampard still learning on the job. And now he's got the extra pressure. He'll be given time because he is a legend at that place. I think they're going to be hard-pressed to stay in the top four. But I, it's so tightly packed, the top six, if you include Spurs. But I don't want to include them. They are quite, frankly, pretty boring. Right? Boring! Sorry, Jose Mourinho. Spurs are a bore. <laughs> Not interested. I was watching their all or nothing. And I can see why there, there are some issues with that team. So we move up. So Chelsea's got all the new faces. Uh, I really believe, anyway, that all those new players coming in, this was a build for 21-22. Okay, so Chelsea fans, I, 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 be, be patient. This is what they're doing. And we'll see if they're patient, because if they hit a bad patch with all those players, I hope they do well because of Pulisic. Number three, the reigning champs, Liverpool. The gap was so huge, but it was a broken season, obviously, with covid I feel like a couple teams are going to pass them with regards to uh, the standings and not only close the 25 points that they had, but leapfrog them. Liverpool, I think, stylistically are going to get figured out a little bit. We saw it uh, with Atletico Madrid. We saw it a little bit in some fixtures post-COVID. They're a remarkable team, but they have to hit the refresh button. They're going to get some new players in there as the season goes on. It's incredible what they were able to accomplish with, with Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Salah had eight, 19 goals, Mane 18. They'll be there. Roberto Firmino. 
still going to be a really good team. But uh, this is more um, a reaction on what the teams in front of them have been able to do. So Liverpool is going to finish third. Don't at me. At me, actually. I'm, not. I'm a grown boy. I got some thick skin. I ain't afraid. <laughs> Number two is Manchester United. And I thought about putting Manchester United at one. I really did. They're going to throw money at this project. They're going to get Jadon Sancho with an astronomical deal at some point. The Vanderbeek move I like. I think they could almost get rid of Paul Pogba because he's so inconsistent. But if he's happy, you have a great midfield. I think Bruno Fernandes is going to be your MVP. He's going to keep growing. And the guys in the front, uh, Rashford and Marshall, all these guys are, are so young. And they've been playing together and building together and believing together. This is that year that Manchester United fans have been waiting for, but not quite enough to get the top spot. Again, this is going to be an active team throughout. Number one, no surprise here, Manchester City. I think everyone's picking Manchester City. It's, it's too easy. You figure they're hungry, disappointed with what happened last season, kind of left out in the cold of everything. The huge disappointment that occurred against Lyon in the Champions League and obviously being set adrift like everybody else by Liverpool. Active in the offseason. Ferran Torres is going to be legit. Nathan Ake is going to be someone that can help lock that down defensively. It's going to be very exciting to see that. Phil Foden taking that next step. Sergio Aguero is going to be there and he's going to score goals. But I, I think we're moving away from that era. And here comes Raheem Sterling to be that number one goal scoring option. He had 20 last season. Manchester City. This could be a little bit before they break up the band. They keep feeding this animal and they keep developing some good players. But I think this is going to be their season. We'll see if they can accompany it with a Champions League triumph as well. Premier League will be the best league in the world next season. They better figure it out in Europe. By the way, I wanted to do a Spanish preview. I'm going to skip it because it's going to be all about Lionel Messi. And I've talked about... He was almost in the Premier League. Could you imagine this preview? But it's going to be uh, all about Messi, and I, I don't want to get depressed. Please subscribe to the Soccer OG.